Well, greetings from Bishop Fenwick, and welcome to this edition of Tuesdays with Tom. I'm coming to you from Mr. Daniel's history classroom. After all, today is election day. We shouldn't talk about politics, right? Uh, but we had a mock election here at Bishop Fenwick. Uh, I'm wearing red, white, and blue, and uh, perhaps we want to talk about politics every now and again. So just three quick reflections on the election. Uh, first of all, the first election that I could vote in, uh, I'm giving my age away here, was 1980. It was uh, Jimmy Carter and Ronald Reagan. And I remember, uh, I guess maybe compared to now, the elections back then seemed to more be focused on reason rather than emotion. Reason rather than emotion. There was much debate and discourse, and I don't remember so much antagonism and anger. Uh, of course, I, I will say to you that it wasn't always quiet in my house because uh, my father, God, God rest him, he was much more of a fan of one person than the other in that election. Uh, he's right behind me here, if you can see that picture. Um, anyway, uh, number two, number two, I talked to a Fenwick alum, this is probably a couple of years ago now, when I said, uh, why do you think there's so much like division and, um, and polarization you know, in our culture today. And he, he offered an interesting insight. He said, well, you know, we used to have multiple ways of defining ourselves. You know, it could be by the city or town in, in which we lived or, or the country from which we came, or maybe it was because of a civic organization or perhaps an organized religion. And he said, we don't do a lot of those things anymore. And he said, so kind of how we define ourselves politically sometimes the only way we define ourselves. An interesting observation. Um, and lastly, I'll just share with you in my capacity uh, um, as a school leader these last, uh, I don't know, 10, 12 years, I've gotten to have conversations with a couple of different people um, who have had a significant experience in Washington. And I shared this yesterday with our students. Um, one of them, a man, the other a woman, uh, one who's um, associated with bringing all of the New England states together for bipartisan um, uh, work and, and uh, legislation. And, and two, uh, a person uh, who is involved in the really high level um, government committee work. That's both sides of the aisle, House and Senate, these congressional committees focused on really key issues. And I asked both of them separately, like, what, what's going on in Washington? Like, why is it so, so, so challenging? Why is there so much gridlock? Why is so much contention? Why is there so much, uh, I don't know, uh, toxicity? And, and I thought they were going to talk about, well, you know, this is what's happening in our culture, or this is what's happening with the political parties, or this is what's going on with the candidates, or this is what's happening with the, with the broader, you know, spectrum of life in America. And they said actually something very simple, shockingly simple. Uh, they said people in Washington have stopped talking to each other. And they didn't mean stop talking to each other like in the floor of the House or the Senate. They meant stop talking to each other after work. They don't socialize anymore. They don't, uh, they don't go to uh, Christmas parties. They don't go to um, uh, drinks on a Friday. They don't go to each other's houses or, or, or spend time with each other at lunch. I thought, wow, that's, that's a really great insight, right? Because if we, if we get to know each other, and spend time with each other and find ourselves in authentic relationships with each other, it's probably going to be harder for us to hate each other. Right? And so maybe, maybe there's wisdom in just trying to talk to each other in a civil way, right? In a respectful way about all the comings and goings of the world in which we live. So I have no predictions about tomorrow. Maybe we're not even going to know tomorrow. Uh, I can predict this uh, somehow. Come on, we'll get through it together. Have a great week. Take care.